welcome to the Resa Papuhayan channel. In November 2004, landslides and flash floods killed at least 1,500 people in the towns of Infanta, Real, and General Nakar in the province of Quezon, Philippines. On that day, flood water rose quickly, reaching a depth of 4 to 6 meters, 13 to 20 feet in just a span of 3 hours. Turbulent waters flowed with debris, including mud and logs, destroying everything in their path. The three towns were isolated from the rest of the country for almost a week as landslides blocked the only road that leads into the area. Access through the coastline was likewise blocked by tons of logs which had been carried down the hills by turbulent flow of water. People viewed illegal logging as the cause of the tragedy. Common sentiment was that deforestation had reduced the water holding capacity of the watershed. Since then much has been said about implementing reforestation programs and putting an end to logging. Now is year 2021. More than 16 years have passed since that tragic event. Still, however, people are wondering whether enough measures have been carried out to prevent such disasters from happening again. A recent series of rainstorms once again caused flooding in the town of Infanta. The flood left deposits of sediments on the ground covering a large area of town. Obviously, soil erosion has not stopped, but since then, erosion occurs whenever there's a downpour in the area. Pictures of mud-covered roads roads and paving have spread on social media, with some netizens commenting and urging the need for construction of concrete dikes along river banks. How about the government's reforestation programs? How have they been going these last 16 years? According to a report written by Danilo C. Israel and Jeffrey H. Lintag, the reforestation program of DENR has only partially attained its replanting targets, and that it has become relatively inefficient in the conduct of replanting activities over the years. Apparently, not enough measures have been done since the 2004 tragedy. Reforestation efforts which involve planting mangroves in coastal areas have been carried out in Infanta. Mangroves help in the fight against climate change, serve as buffers against tsunami and storm surge, as well as provide means of livelihood to local communities. However, since they are planted in coastal areas, they do nothing to prevent upland soil erosion and surface water runoff. Water normally comes rushing down from mountains and hills within the watershed. They naturally find their way to streams and rivers which eventually carry them to the sea. In order to prevent recurrence of flash floods, reforestation should be carried out of hill within the watershed area. Roots of trees and vegetation absorb water. They allow more water to penetrate the soil, recharging the aquifer faster, raising the water table, and increasing the capacity of the soil to store water. In the process, they minimize and slow down surface runoff, resulting in a steadier flow of water in rivers and streams. In the absence of trees and vegetation, soil percolation is slower, water table goes down, rivers and streams dry up, and surface water during downpours flows more rapidly, increasing the risk of landslides, soil erosion, and flooding. Reforestation programs must be carried out with a sense of urgency. Trees take time to grow and mature. Tropical hardwoods, for instance, usually require 50 to 100 years to reach maturity. The risk of tragedy, such as was in 2004, continues to loom over if there are not enough trees and vegetation in the watershed. Who knows when the next storm, which could cause as much if not more, damage will hit. With these considerations, bamboo could prove to be a very suitable candidate plant for the reforestation projects. Bamboo is the fastest growing plant on earth. The Chinese Moso bamboo, Phyllostachys edulis, holds the world record for the fastest growing plant. It can grow up to 910 millimeters or 35 inches in one day under optimal soil and climate conditions. Another bamboo species with incredible fast growth rates is Matake bamboo, Phyllostachys bamboo soides. The Chinese Moso bamboo is also known as the hardest bamboo species in the world. It 
grows up to 20 meters, 66 feet tall and 100 millimeters or inches in diameter. On average, it reaches its maximum height in a few months and takes only 4 to 5 years to reach its optimal hardness, strength and density. In contrast, tropical hardwood require 50 to 100 years to reach maturity. In terms of size, the bamboo species Dendrocalamus sinicus is considered the largest in the world, reaching 40 meters 131 feet in height and 300 millimeters 12 inches in diameter. Besides being a fast grower, bamboo is a grass that continues to grow and multiply indefinitely. Four to five year old bamboo stems can be harvested on an annual basis while new shoots continue to emerge from the ground. They don't need to be replanted after harvest. Bamboo can be used for erosion control, soil stabilization, wind breaks, wildlife protection, environmental remediation, and carbon dioxide sequestration, just to name a few among hundreds if not thousands of other uses. Bamboo has a very strong and extensive root system that can hold soil together, preventing the soil from getting eroded by moving water and air. Bamboo's roots absorb water and allow more water to percolate into the soil, and in the process raise the water table. They slow down the flow of surface water when it rains, resulting in reduced risk of landslides and flooding. Bamboos can be used as windbreaks to prevent or minimize losses and damages to crops and properties caused by strong winds. They could act as a buffer, slowing down wind speed, reducing and redirecting directing wind pressure and lessening the impact of typhoons or hurricanes. Bamboo forests could serve as a home for animals that are in danger of losing their habitat due to deforestation. Furthermore, they trap carbon dioxide and help fight climate change. In fact, they are said to be more effective than trees in capturing and converting carbon dioxide. Accordingly, one hectare of bamboo converts about 35% more carbon dioxide than a hectare of regular trees. These are just a few of the many benefits of planting bamboos. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of other uses of bamboo. Likewise, there are many different species of bamboo. Depending on specific use, some species may be more suitable than others. We just covered a little bit about some of them in this presentation. There is a lot more to learn and to discuss about bamboo. Most of them, however, are beyond the scope of this presentation. We will cover more about bamboo, especially the different species and their specific uses in future presentations. Please stay tuned. If you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe now and hit the notification bell so you'd be updated whenever we post new videos. for today. Feel free to like, share, and comment. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day.